so it is June 10th um, and I'm, I switched up my videos this is the video of the in-ground garden and this isn't really week five for this garden because we have been busting it every week to add to it get it where we wanted it and most of the all of this was in ground from seed so other than this little new little watermelon patch that I had some starter plants that a friend gave me but the rest of it has all come that we've done from seed and and, and then this bed this bed has been little finds <laughs> that I have found um, at some of the different markets and a couple of uh, like Pike Nursery because they had um, this variety right here they're called Big Brandies they have my namesake and they're a um, they're an heirloom and a hybrid uh, is what it said mix so they're supposed to be more disease resistant which is a big issue you have if you're ever growing heirloom tomatoes especially here with like all the rain and mold I mean it just takes them out year after year you just get a few never enough I also ha found some I got some strawberries that I got from the local farmers market I think both of those cost me like a buck a few weeks back and then I have some jalapeno peppers there's a couple extra new jalapeno peppers that I put out here that Jessica gave me because I didn't have any more room in the in the raised bed uh, garden and so I plucked them in out here because the deer do not like and of course as I speak I don't know if y'all can see that but there's a deer over there <laughs> I'm not kidding the struggles real y'all it is real but that's the wooded area that they can't get into the garden so but they just keep getting closer closer <laughs> so anyway and then I have my basil in here and this is my other this was a mortgage lifter the guy just gave me because it was puny looking and he said do you want it and I said yeah I'll take it because I love them and I put it out here I've got the bigger one in the bucket in the other garden and it's doing pretty good right there and I do have one that's a cantaloupe I rescued so this is the only other raised bed I have and then I think this is new from the last video I did but I planted this up these are all most of all of them are perennial or you can just deadhead the flowers and they'll reseed each year but most of these are perennial flowers they're deer deterrents but they're pollinators so this is kind of my, my pollinator basket to attract them to our in-ground garden so the deer did get in to this garden this last week and they ate most of that row of my North Carolina half runner greasy beans. So John added a lot more fencing and now we have a gate to get in. So we're not like Mr. Wrestler number two, you know, tagging each other in and out. And so we can come in and so far this has worked really well we have another perimeter fence that goes along the outside and um, it has a couple it has a couple of strings with it and these strings can be electrified which just really didn't want to have to electrify it if we didn't have to so but these are some of my seedless watermelons I have a new one coming up right there I, we think all of them have come up except for maybe one that we planted so with the seedless watermelons you have to have um you have the seedless seed that you plant but you have to plant a pollinator seed which is a different variety and i think those were the charleston grays were the pollinator variety that we planted so we're not sure which ones are the seedless yet and which ones are the charleston grays because they will look different. We know what a Charleston Gray looks like. We're not sure what the seedless one. I mean, we only know what the Haas package had on there. So we'll see. And they said, I know Haas had said they were new to them this year. So, and we even have a new one right there that came up right by where he put the gate. So we're having to be super careful when we come in the garden. And then we kept this row of beans. 
and it goes a little bit over and then we planted our peaches and cream corn John did this yesterday and I planted I had to thin out all the okra because every one of them came up that's the crimson spineless that's an heirloom and it loves it here it's much more prolific than the burgundy heirloom seeds of okra but I did get some they're just kind of sporadic so I plugged in corn where I had open spots and um, the corn that we've planted all of this is peaches and creams corn it is a hybrid um, it's a sweet corn but this corn that got planted first is a dent corn and so dent corn is for making milling for cornbread or cornmeal and or and or popping you can use it for popping um, and that one actually got planted on accident and then the seeds for the peaches and cream got wet and so John put them in a seed tray and every one of them came up <laughs> so we went ahead and planted them even though you're not really supposed to put two different types of corn you're not really supposed to grow them together um, but the dent corn takes I think it was hundred and twenty plus days to be ripe be ready to go and the peaches and cream is like 75 days and since we plant them the exact same time they should pollinate at different times and so what I had read from a couple different um, blog post and um, I think I read something on the farmers almanac that you might be okay and they're not right next to each other you really would want more than what we have but this is what we have and this is our year to learn and we really want to get the peaches and cream because that's the one you eat and it's supposed to be super good and it's supposed to be super easy to grow because I don't even know if the dent corn will work we've not had a lot of luck with corn in years past so one of the reasons we got the mushroom compost which if you come over here you'll see all the mushrooms because they are coming up like crazy because of all the rain we're getting but they're right there you can see all those mushrooms but they burn off by the end of the day and they just are feeding the microbes in the soil so everything we've read it's not hurting anything a lot of people get freaked out by mushrooms there's some more over there but it's just meaning that you have microorganisms in your soil that means your soil is living and breathing and doing all the things you want it to do and so I'm gonna walk over here because these candy roasters now that's a bean that got in there probably a bird but this is the candy roaster that I planted that I seed saved from a farmer friend I met last year during the pandemic and so I planted and these things should do well with the corn because they'll go buying around the bottom and the corn of course will go up high so I hope that they I hope they do well because they are delicious and then on the outside the orange cut pro cut flower sunflower they actually started coming up they didn't come up as prolific as um the lemon i think it's the lemon queen out there that i planted i had to actually thin those out the other day and oh hi kitty hello kitty how are you here let's get out of the garden come in the walkway and oh, that's pretty i think it's kind of they're kind of cool looking there we go very cool looking mushrooms are neat and so we now have it fully planted Lord willing the deer do not get back in and we should get a lot of food from this bed and we did do the no-till um, method and brought in lots of good compost and I'm just hoping I have been weeding there's still some weeds because we did not put the um, 
woven weave in here just because I don't want to burn all these holes. I'm just going to be honest. I just felt like we had put so much compost and we had actually tarped all of this for six months or more. And so I just kind of felt like the few things I have been picking out are dandelions, which at first are good to have because they bring your bees, which we've been having lots of volunteer bees. And um, so that's okay. And I get a little bit of Bermuda grass and you just have to get in there and pull it out because it's, you know, it's got that tap root and I hate it. I don't know who brought Bermuda grass and thought it was a good idea or Virginia creeper because I hate both of them. And apparently I'm very allergic to Virginia creeper. I still have scars from pulling it all out on the side of my house. So anyway, this is our in-ground bed. We'll call it week five. <laughs> Cause the other one was week five um, but I'm actually thinking this is probably closer to about week three um, but this is our in-ground bed you can do it in ground beds you can do containers or raised beds everybody can can grow food that is nutritious and it actually tastes good it actually has flavor and that should be what we're all going for so thanks for checking out this week's video. I can't wait in the weeks to come to see how huge all this is. It's going to be taller than I am, I hope. That's the hope. Well, maybe not the watermelons, but that's the hope. Till next time.